Hi, I'm Kath. Welcome back to my channel made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. So this is a sewing catch up video. So I've got a few projects to share with you that I've been working on over the last week or so. There's a bit of a variety in this video as ever. I do like to sew up quite a variety of projects, but I think today is mostly dressmaking projects um, or the variety of types of um, garments I've been working on. And then I've also got a bit of knitting progress I wanted to share with you. I've been sort of working away in the evenings on my latest knitting project. So I will talk about that at the end of the video once I've shared my dressmaking projects. But yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing everything. I thought I mentioned before I get started, um, if you've noticed my nose is looking a bit red, that is because I've had a bit of a nasty head cold over the last week or so. I think my son brought it home from school. He was feeling rotten for a couple of days. He had a day off school last week because he was all cold up and didn't sleep well. He's kindly passed it on to me and it's just one of those colds that seems to be lurking around um, and hanging around for a while. So I feel like I've blown my nose about 20 million times, but I think it is on the way out now, which is nice, but I'm just left with, yeah, a bit of a red nose. But anyway, it's also actually really cold still here, so I think that probably isn't helping. Um, today is still really chilly. There was a bit of rain earlier, and now it's just gone cold again and overcast. So I'm really hoping we get some spring weather soon, but it doesn't seem to be quite here yet. But anyway, I'll start off this video as ever with what I'm wearing today. And I think this is a new garment that I haven't shared on here yet. I made it a few weeks ago, and somehow it seems to have slipped through the cracks of what I've included in my videos. But it's a sweatshirt I made using one of my favourite sweatshirt patterns. You probably might recognise it and know which of my favourite patterns it might be. It is this one here. It is the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen. I really love this sweatshirt pattern. It's really relaxed and easy to wear. It's got loads of different variations. You can make this sort of classic sweatshirt here with a dropped shoulder and a round neck and then cuffs and a bottom band, which is what I've made here. But there are some cool other options too, like this version on the front with a tie. At the bottom, there's a funnel neck, a couple of different um, sleeve cuff options too. There's this sort of split cuff, this dip hem. So yeah, loads of um, different options built into this pattern, which is one of the reasons why I really like it. And I also just find it's quite a nice, relaxed um, one to wear. I do like a dropped shoulder. I just kind of like that style. And it's also got a really good size range as well. I've got the um, 0 to 20 pattern, like US sizing. There's also a Megan Nielsen curve version, which I think goes from a size 14 up to a 30 or a 32. So yeah, it's a really um, great pattern. I hadn't made one for a while, and then I found in my fabric suitcase, which has fabric remnants, I had quite a decent amount of this fabric left over from another project, or another two projects, actually. So this is a CU at 6 French cherry that I bought a very long time ago. I think it came from La Marzi Fabrics. They often stock quite a few nice fabrics in the CU at 6 range. I'll link the current fabrics they have from the range down below. But this one is quite an old one. CU at 6 seems to release fabrics and then they kind of sell out of those and then they'll release a new range rather than keeping fabrics going like some other fabric companies seem to do like Atelier Brunette I find you can often get their fabrics for quite a long time but CUX6 seem to release in sort of small collections but anyway it's a French terry sort of loop back jersey fabric so you can see from the inside there it's got the loop back I got the matching ribbing too and I just really like the colour of this one it's this really pretty sort of dusky pink colour with darker pink spots on um, I just thought it was a really cute fabric so I got it quite a while ago maybe I don't know maybe three or four years ago and I originally made out of it two garments, one for me and one for my daughter so we could twin, um, which was a lot of fun at the time. So for me, I made originally um, a sweatshirt using this pattern here, which is a solar sweatshirt and tee pattern by Paper Cut Patterns. It's this sweatshirt here with this cute frill on the sleeve. And I've still got my version here because I still really love to wear it and it's actually washed and worn really well. Here is my original um, solar sweater I made in the same fabric. So you can see it's got this ruffle on the sleeve. It's a bit crumpled from being in the drawer but I thought I'd get it out to show how well this fabric's washed and worn it really hasn't gone barely bobbly at all and and the colour hasn't really faded at all either with washing much so um yeah really nice quality fabric can you see that because I've worn this so much um, and washed it so many times I think it's held, held up really well so I made this and I also made my daughter a really cute little sweater dress um 
I use the, I think it's called the Jasmine Sweatshirt Pattern by Ikati Couture. I'll double check and include the details down below. This little sweatshirt pattern for children also has a ruffle on the sleeve. And I sort of lengthened it and made it into a sweater dress. I'll see if I can find a picture of us twinning in those outfits because it was quite cute at the time. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll put it up here. And she has long grown out of that dress now because I did make it quite a while ago, but I am still wearing the sweatshirt. But anyway, um, to cut a long story short, I, when I think when I ordered this fabric originally, because I was making the two garments, I over ordered and I wanted to make sure I had enough for both of us. So I ended up with just enough left to squeeze out this Jara sweatshirt. And I thought with the fabric, do I really want two sweatshirts that are in the same fabric? But I thought, well, they were quite different because this one's a lot more close fitting and has a ruffle. And I just thought you can't go wrong with a Jara sweatshirt. So I thought I'd use the rest of the fabric to make something I know I'd wear. I had leftover ribbing too. So I've got that on the um, neck band and the cuffs and the bottom band too. And it's just turned into a really nice comfy sweatshirt. I quite like how the dusky pink goes with the sort of blue jeans colour. I'll put a picture up so you can see I'm just wearing ready to wear jeans today. And as ever with the Jara sweatshirt, I made the size zero, which is designed for my bust measurement of 32. The waist and hips that size are slightly smaller than me, but the Jara is designed to be oversized. So I find going by the bust measurement is fine. There's still quite a lot of room there, even right down to my hips. And the only adjustments I made are to was to lengthen the sleeves, I think by about an inch or an inch and a half to make them nice and cosy and long. And I also lengthened the bodice, the body, I think by about an inch and a half too, because I do find their Jarrah comes up a little bit cropped on me. And I'm five foot six and I do have a longer torso, but yeah, hopefully the picture will show you kind of where it's ended up on me. And um, it kind of comes over the top of my jeans and creates quite a cosy middle bit there. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. I was really happy I had enough of this fabric to make another sweatshirt because I just really love the colour. I love the fabric and I know both will last for a long time, judging by how well my original one has washed. <laughs> oh, and I just had another quick look in my pattern box and I managed to find the children's wear pattern I used for my daughter to twin with my Solar sweatshirt. So I thought I'd show you the pattern. It is the Jasmine sweatshirt by Ikati Couture. As you can see, it's really similar to the Solar Sol Sol sweatshirt with this little drop shoulder and the ruffle. It's a really cute pattern, actually. It goes from three up to 12 years. Again, it's a loose fitting sweatshirt. I think I've only made, used this pattern maybe once or twice for my daughter and quite a long time ago. So I really should revisit it for her because I think it's really cute. Um, and I love that ruffle shoulder detail on me. And I think she'd really like another version too. So yeah. I should definitely revisit this one. But yeah, I thought I'd show you the pattern um, just for completeness. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing today. And the next thing I wanted to talk about in this video is another new make that I finished this week. But it's a bit of a funny one because it's actually a remake of a garment that I made quite a long time ago. And there's a bit of a backstory as to why I needed to remake it. But it's a skirt that I've made using this pattern here, which is the estuary skirt pattern by So Liberated. Again, like the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt, it's another of my favourite patterns. So I've been revisiting a few old favourites recently. It's a woven skirt pattern um, with a flat fronted waistband and elastic on the back. And it's got a button placket down the front, but you can make that as a faux placket because of the elastic on the back. That means you can get in just by stretching it rather than needing to open the buttons. And it's got, it's quite a full skirt and you can make it with different lengths. And there's a couple of different pocket options built in. There's like a patch pocket and also inseam pockets. And it's another pattern that comes in a really good size range. I think it goes from a zero up to a 30, which takes you up to a waist of 48 and a half inches. So it's a pattern I really love. And I love particularly cropping it off to make a mini skirt version. I find it creates a really swishy um, mini skirt, particularly if you sew it in like a drapey, swishy fabric, like a viscose. And I've made a few actually, and I find they work all year round because in summer I'll pair them with a vest top and in winter I'll pair them with like a cozy jumper, like one of my cropped Nina Lee South Bank. So I find they're a really versatile type of skirt. And it's really hard to pick a favourite out of my estuary skirts because I really love them all and I wear all of them a lot. But one of my favourites is definitely this one that I've just remade and it's I made it originally in a viscose twill fabric by Mind the Maker and I remember when Mind the Maker released these fabrics 
I thought they were really, really lovely. Um, all of the colourways were nice, but this particular colourway caught my eye and I thought it would make a really nice skirt that would be really versatile too. So here is my original version of the S3 skirt, which I made in this Mind the Maker Viscose fabric. Um, it's kind of open now because I've taken the buttons off to use for my second version. I thought I like the buttons, so I thought why not reuse them because this version has gone quite tatty, unfortunately. So I made this about well, it's quite a while ago now and it's had a lot of wear. As I said, it's one of those garments I'll wear through the year. Well, it's really well with black tights and a black top, but also a black vest top in summer. I um, mean, yeah, it's lovely fabric, but unfortunately it hasn't worn very well. I remember even when I was sewing it, actually, to be honest, I didn't find it the easiest fabric to sew with. I found it ran quite easily, even though I was using quite a fine Microtex needle. So, yeah, I found it quite tricky fabric, but over time, as I've washed it, it definitely has lost its colour quite a lot, particularly when I compare it to how little colour has come out of my um, um, French Terry sweatshirt. This one definitely has faded through time. And then you may remember last year, if you watched one of my videos at the time, I was talking about how we went to London for the weekend and I spent a day in London wearing this skirt and I had sort of bags because we, we were going off the weekend with we loads of stuff to carry. And I realised at the end of the day that one of the bags had kind of rubbed the skirt so much, all the fabric had bobbled down the side, you can see here. So I was really disappointed um, and it just kind of spoiled the fabric. And I thought, well, actually, it's faded quite a lot anyway. It's just going a bit tatty generally. So, yeah, I thought it's still in stock at Minerva. And Minerva happened to have, I think just at that actual London weekend, they happened to have one of their um VIP weekends where if you're a member of the craft club, you get 20% off. So I thought I'm just going to buy some more of this fabric and remake this skirt because this one definitely has gone very tatty looking and I love the fabric. I don't know how long it was going to they were going to carry on producing the fabric so I thought I'd buy that last summer and then when I'm in the mood I can make another estuary skirt because I just love this one so much. And then when the fabric arrived because it was a remake I didn't feel very motivated to actually get started with it so the fabric's been sitting waiting for a while until last week when I suddenly thought I'm kind of missing wearing this skirt I really should make the second version I just thought right while I'm in the mood I'll get it cut out and I'll start sewing it up so yeah, I've now finished my second version actually it's one of those patterns I've sewed quite a few times so once I got started I sort of motored through it and I did leave it for a couple of days to hang because I do find with the kind of viscose fabric and the fact the skirt's cut on the curve some bits can drop a bit particularly the edge so yeah I left it for a couple of days to hang I've hemmed it now it's all done so I'll show you my new version which I've got here so here is my new estuary skirt and this lovely fabric and you can see how much the colours faded when you compare the two actually in this light it doesn't even show how much but this version is a lot more vibrant than this older version um so it's really nice to have a new one I don't know how well it'll wash again whether it'll fade um as much but it's funny actually when I was sewing this version I found the fabric behaved a lot better so I don't know whether the fabrics changed slightly or whether I was just extra careful because I knew it could run easily but I didn't have any runs on this garment at all and I remembered very much when I made my first version particularly when I hand sewed the buttons on that was when I got a couple of runs particularly this time I didn't get any runs sewing the buttons on or anything it just behaved really nicely so my second version went really smoothly I've added in the inseam pockets which I find quite handy I've borrowed the buttons from my first version, so it's pretty much an exact replica of the first version, only much newer, with fewer fabric runs, so yeah, altogether a better version, I guess. So yeah, here's my second version. I haven't got a picture with this on, I'll try and go and get a picture afterwards so you can see what it looks like and pop a picture up. I think I sized down slightly on this pattern because um, when I made my first version, I found it, found it came up a little bit big on the waist. But actually, that might just have been because I didn't calculate the elastic well, because you can kind of adjust the pattern sizing around the waist based on how long you choose the elastic. But yeah, here it is. I'm really looking forward to wearing this one because I have missed having my old version in my wardrobe. And although it wasn't my funnest make ever to remake something, I'm really glad I did because, yeah, I was really sad when I realised that one had kind of got all bobbly and spoiled. So yeah, version number two of my estuary skirt. I'm glad after having the fabric for, I guess, at least six months or so, I finally sewed this one up. So the next thing I've got to share in this video is another new make, and this was quite a speedy little sew, and has turned out really cute actually, I think. It is a make for my daughter. So she's really gone through a growth spurt recently, I think I've mentioned, and I've recently made her a couple of new pairs of pyjamas because those were getting a little bit short. But we've also noticed some of her leggings have been sort of getting towards ankle swinger length. She really needed 
some new pairs. So I said, would you like me to make you a pair maybe? I have made some for her in the past um, and she was quite up for that. So I said I'd get out all of the fabric remnants I had left over in fabrics that she'd chosen previously and see if there was enough of any fabric to make some leggings. Um, I thought it'd be quite nice to be able to use what we already had if possible because I know there's some fabrics in my fabric suitcase of remnants that she still really loves so I went and had a little rootle around the suitcase and got out a few options and there were two particular fabrics that she particularly liked but when we had to look at them I wasn't sure if there was quite enough of each fabric to cut out a full pair of leggings it looked like it might be a hard squeeze so she came up with the idea that we actually use a bit of two different fabrics to make a pair of leggings with two different um, fabrics for each leg, which I thought was quite a fun idea, actually, and she was really tickled by that idea. So that is what we decided to do. Funnily enough, actually, when I did actually get the pattern out that I used for the leggings and held the pattern piece up against the fabric, there would have been enough to make actually a pair of leggings in one fabric for both fabrics. But by then she had the idea set in her mind that she'd really like the two different fabrics combined so I thought let's go with that and then if she's happy with the leggings we can always make another pair um, using the same fabric combination or I can always use the rest of the fabric for pants for her going forward or something like that um, so yeah it wouldn't go to waste but anyway I made up these leggings and I made them up using a pattern that I've used before for her which is the Love Notions Girls Leggings Pattern and I haven't got a paper copy of it, I've only ever used it on PDF on my computer, I haven't printed the actual pattern instructions out, but I'll try and pop a picture up here. It's quite a cute leggings pattern, um, it comes with a couple of different waistband options, you can either make a sort of classic elasticated waistband option where you insert the elastic, or you can make a sort of yoga style waistband, I think they describe it, which is a bit larger and um, just relies on the sort of stretch in the actual fabric to kind of hold them in, you don't add elastic in. And I've always gone for the option where you do add the elastic in just because it's more similar to the ready to wear ones my daughter has. So that kind of seemed to be more up her street. So I sewed up the leggings for my daughter um, and I find the girls leggings pattern is a really nice pattern to sew up. It's a really simple, speedy sew. If you're making the version with the elastic around the waist, there's only one pattern piece, which is basically a leg. So you cut two legs out. There's no outer seam on the leggings. So you just basically sew the inner leg seam on each leg then sew the crotch seams together and then fold over the top to create the channel for the elastic so yeah they come together really quickly and in terms of sizing the pattern goes from an age 2 up to an age 14 which I think is a really good size range for a free children's pattern and hopefully it's one I'll be able to use for my daughter for quite a few years going forward so that's quite handy too and for my daughter, because I'd made the pattern before, I had an idea of what I wanted to do on the sizing front. I did have to trace out a new version this time because she's definitely got bigger than since the last time I'd made it. And I remember the last time I made it, I found it came up a little bit roomy around the waist and hips. So the options I could choose for my daughter was either an age six or an age eight. And there wasn't actually a specific age seven, which is how old she is now. But I went for the age six because I remembered it came up a bit roomy around the area before but I also remember from previously the actual leggings leg fit is quite a slim fit on this pattern and I remember when I made my first version of my daughter it came up a little bit sort of snugger on the leg than I was expecting so what I decided to do was trace the size six around the waist and hips and then taper out to a size eight to give a bit more room on the leg and that's worked out really well actually and I also made a couple of other adjustments I just increased the height um, the top of the leggings I think by about an inch because when I compared the pattern pieces to her ready to wear leggings it looked like her ready to wear ones came up slightly higher and was maybe a slightly less low rise than the girls leggings so I thought she'd probably like them to be very similar to the ones she finds comfortable that are ready to wear so yeah I did a bit of height to the top of the pattern piece and then I also just lengthened the bottom slightly as well because I was conscious that she's definitely grown so this age six version might be a little bit yeah too short so yeah I just lengthen them a little bit there and I thought we can always chop up a bit of length later if needed but anyway I'll show you the leggings I think they're really cute actually um here they are the leggings my daughter designed in these two different fabrics as you can see the fabrics are quite different they're both cotton jerseys and very similar kind of weight to them but and they, they're both very different colours, but they both have got unicorns on. So that's the kind of, um, yes, yeah, sort of the, the continuity between the legs, I guess. 
This pink fabric here is one I got quite a while ago and made a dress for my daughter, which I actually made quite large. I think she, that she still really fits into that dress, even though I made it a while ago, because I think I made it quite long. But anyway, it's got larger scale unicorns on with these little stripy horns. They're very cute with some sort of clouds and stars in pink colours. And this fabric you may recognise because I very recently used it to make a pyjama set for my daughter and I had a bit left over. Um, so yeah, it's quite cute. It's a bit more of a wintry print to it with this navy blue background and slightly smaller scale unicorns and rainbows and presents. But my daughter really loved the combination. And I thought, if you can't wear something this bright and cheerful when you're seven, then when can you? So yeah. I think they've turned out really nicely. At the back, I added a bit of um, I did a bit of fancy stitching from a machine to add these little hearts, so she can um, yeah, see which way around they go on. That's the back to make it a bit easier um for her to know. But yeah, they came together nicely, and I think I've got a picture of my daughter wearing these. And if I can find that, I'll put it up here. But she's really happy with them. I'm glad I did um, add a bit of length to the top and widen the legs. So I think they've turned out to be quite a nice fit. And she seems to find them quite comfy so yeah that was quite a quick little make a nice to use up a couple of these fabric remnants to turn them into something quite fun for my daughter that definitely no one else will have <laughs> so the next thing that i've got to share is a new piece of fabric and i'm really excited to have this new fabric because i really haven't bought um much fabric at all for myself this year i think the last time i bought fabric for myself was in the sort of Christmas and New Year sales and I bought a few pieces then which I've since sewn up but other than that I think the only fabric I've bought since um, sort of end of December beginning of January is to buy some more of the navy unicorn jersey that I used for those leggings I just showed you to have enough to be able to make my daughter's pyjama set because I had a little bit left over from another project. So yeah that fabric arrived for my daughter but I was really excited to get this fabric parcel with some fabric for myself in because it is always lovely to get a fabric parcel in the post isn't it and yeah I'm really looking forward to sewing with this fabric. So this fabric came from Guthrie Garni and it's a viscose linen fabric and I'll show you it here. It's a viscose linen fabric in black. They have I think this viscose linen in a few other colourways but I particularly had a particular project in mind I wanted to get the black colourway. And it's a really lovely quality fabric, as I always find Guthrie Garni fabrics are. That's one of the reasons why I got it. Um, it is a 75% viscose and 25% linen fabric. And I've been looking for something like this for a while. I wanted kind of a viscose linen with quite a high viscose content, but not super high. And this is just perfect. Um, it's lovely and drapey, but it's got a bit of substance to it. It's got a bit of a linen texture and a bit more substance than like a classic sort of visco chalet or something. So yeah, it's just what I wanted and I'm really looking forward to sewing with it. And I came across this fabric because I was watching maybe a week or two ago, um, Guthrie Garni on YouTube, Lauren was showing the latest fabric arrivals in the store and she was talking about a few summary fabrics that had come in. So I thought I'll just go and check the website and see what else was on there. I don't think she was talking about this particular fabric. I think she was talking about some tensile linens. Um, yes, yeah, so I went to have a little browse and I came across this fabric and thought that'd be perfect for the project I have in mind. So I snapped it up. And what I'd like to make with this fabric is a pair of trousers for summer. And there's something I've wanted to sew for a while. And I guess they don't seem that seasonal at the moment because the weather's still quite cool, but there's nothing particular I'm wanting to sew for winter right now. So I thought I may as well get on and start sewing these. So as soon as the hot weather hits, I'll be able to enjoy wearing them. And I think this fabric is a lovely weight viscose linen that'll be perfect for a pair of summery trousers. So the trousers that I'd like to make with this fabric are the pattern here. The trousers from this pattern here, which is the Saguaro set by Friday Pattern Co. So you're probably familiar with this pattern already. It was really popular last summer. It's a lovely two-piece woven set for this really cute top with kind of like a plunging v-neck and these sort of grown on sleeves and elastic at the bottom and then these lovely um sort of wide legged um pants that have this elasticated um waistline and you can add an optional tie on them too and there's pockets included as well so yeah i think it's a really cute pattern i wasn't actually sure about it when i first came out particularly and um, with the showing of a little bit of midriff i wasn't sure if that was for me but um, i bought it on a whim and sewed up a top in some leftover fabric I had from another project that I thought would make a quite cute um, top from this set. And actually, I liked it a lot more than I expected. Um, yeah, and it sewed up really nicely, as I find Friday Pattern Co. patterns do. And I didn't really get much of a chance to wear that top last summer because 
I made it right towards the end of summer but I'm looking forward to wearing it this year and we are hopefully going abroad this year in the summer so I think it'll be perfect for going abroad and keeping my shoulders covered but also being nice and loose and airy because the sleeves are sort of designed to be nice and loose and airy they're not sort of tight fitting at all so perfect for warm weather and in terms of sizing as ever with Friday Pattern Company patterns it's got a really good size range just trying to find the size range it goes from an extra small up to a 7x um which is designed for a bust of 65 inches and a waist of 61 and a half inches so yeah really good size range on this pattern so I'll show you the top I made last year um which you may have seen before um or not um <laughs> here it is um i made it in this lovely viscose fabric that i got from self-made which i originally used for a um sort of midi length ogden cami dress and um, that was kind of strappy with a little ruffle i really like that dress actually i haven't worn it recently i should really get it out in winter because it'd be nice with the black top layered underneath but yeah anyway i had just enough leftover fabric to make this top so i made the top with a little optional tie which you can add on because I wasn't sure about how plunging it would be otherwise and it's got the elastic on the bottom it's actually surprisingly comfy to wear I find I didn't have enough of this fabric to make matching bottoms and I actually thought matching bottoms in this leopard print might be feel too too much for me um but yeah um, I wanted to make some bottoms I could wear with it so I thought a pair in black viscose linen would be perfect and something that's quite versatile that I could also match with other tops say if I made another um saguaro top or just maybe like teaming the linen trousers with like a stevie top or any t-shirt really i guess so that is my plan for this fabric and i'm really looking forward to sewing with it i haven't washed it yet because i quite like to line dry it and it's been a bit too cold at the moment for line drying so i'm hoping i'll get a nice day where i can stick it on the line soon but anyway that is my plan but over the last couple of days what i decided to do was to make um a toile of the saguaro pants just to check the fit on me particularly because I find often with trousers which I don't make that often to be honest but when I do make them I find I often need to make an adjustment just to deepen the crotch a little bit because I think my, I must have a longer than average measurement between my natural waist and sort of my crotch but I didn't want to lengthen it too much and end up with them looking sort of too baggy so I thought I'd make a little um have a little go at making a twirl to check that I could get that adjustment right so what I decided to do was to use some fabric um, from my stash that I had left over from another project that I wasn't too keen on and I thought I'd just make a non-wearable twirl just to check that fit and I just decided to make a shorts version just because I actually didn't have enough of this fabric to make the full trousers and I didn't really need to check the length anyway I wasn't that's not I'm not concerned about that because I can always add a bit of length on um, to the pattern pieces and then chop them off if I need to so that should be an easier adjustment but if you don't get the crotch right first time, I don't think there's anything you can do to adjust it once you've already sewn it. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be good to check that. So I basically traced out the size small on the pattern, which was based on my measurements. My measurement for both my waist and my hips put that is the size small. And here is my non-wearable toile. Um, so here's, here it is. Um, so it's got their little pockets. I added those in. I had to adjust the length of the pockets too when I made the crotch adjustment. I think I adjusted by lengthening the crotch or deepened the crotch by an inch just to bring it down slightly. Um, it's got the pockets added in. I just made a shorts length version. And at the moment it's got elastic in. It's got a tail here, but I'm planning to take that elastic back out again and use it for my real version because this is just a twirl that I'm not planning to finish. This fabric is a fabric I got quite a while ago from Rainbow Fabrics and it's it's a viscose but it's not my favourite style of viscose it's kind of one of those more bumpy viscoses and it's just not a fabric I love so I thought it'd be perfect to just try out for this pattern so yeah they came together really nicely obviously I haven't finished them I haven't hemmed them I didn't overlock any of the seams I just was doing this purely for fit um and so I found from this version from trying them on that the one centimetre extra sorry one inch extra I've added to the crotch has done the job it now sits quite nicely on me the, the waistband sits on my natural waist and it feels comfortable all around so I'm glad I made that adjustment I'm going to keep that but what I have found actually on them is I think I'm actually going to size up on this pattern one size because I found I'm not actually getting a lot of gathering around the top as you can see at the back there it's not evenly spread at the moment evenly distributed but it isn't doesn't isn't actually gathering in a lot around my waistband and I quite like the idea of it gathering a bit more and then being a bit more billowy over my hips. So I think I'm going to size up from the size small to the size medium when I cut out my proper fabric. Just so it is more sort of cinching in around the waist. Because at the moment it feels like it's fairly slim line there and I want it to be a bit looser 
and more of a relaxed fit so that is my plan for the main version so I was actually quite surprised that I needed to or that I felt I needed to size up one size so I'm really glad I made this 12 version because although the crotch adjustment would have come out fine if I cut straight into my proper fabric I actually wouldn't have thought about sizing up on the waist so yeah I'm going to size up one size for my version which is a bit of a pain because I've already traced all the pattern pieces out in a size small so I think what I'm going to do is instead of retracing the whole lot out I'm just going to add a little bit of extra tracing paper down the edges just to kind of um yeah bring them out to the next size up but it'll be worth doing to get the right fit for the final version so and it was a fun and quick speedy sew as ever I do find Friday pattern company patterns come together really nicely so I'm glad I did that little twirl now hopefully there'll be a nice sunny or windy day soon so I can get that proper fabric on the line and start cutting out my proper version and I'll show you those as soon as I've sort of um, worked on them. So the final thing I wanted to share in this video is the progress I've been making on my latest knitting project. It's a project I started I think maybe over Christmas and then I got distracted by some crochet and um, went down a bit of a crochet rabbit hole. Uh, made a little crochet blanket for my daughter which I showed in a previous video uh, but now I've got back to this knitting project now and I'm really enjoying getting stuck into it I'm now feeling like I'm in the rhythm and I'm really looking forward to getting back to it and doing a few rows every evening so the pattern I'm working on is this one here it's a pattern by We Are Knitters it's their pink cosmos sweater and I originally bought this pattern in a kit and made a black version of it but I'm now making my second version so I managed to get some yarn for this one when there was a special offer on I didn't obviously have to rebuy the pattern so it's nice to be able to reuse it. It's a really cute lacy stitch sweatshirt pattern I'll try and find a picture of my first version the black version I made and pop it up so you can see how that one turned out. I really enjoyed knitting I loved the lacy stitches I found it a lot of fun and I really love the jumper, I love wearing this one, so I thought it'd be nice to have another version in my wardrobe. So I decided to go for quite a different yarn for this version, a much lighter coloured yarn, which I thought might be quite summery. And which is this one here, um, oh that's the right way around, so you can see the stitches are starting to come out. This is the sleeve I'm working on at the moment. I can't remember what this colour is called, I think it might be called off-white or natural. I think I've got a ball in here still with a label on so I can check. Um say it here oh yeah it's called natural so it's kind of like a creamy color quite a pretty color um and I've got I've just been basically working through all the pattern pieces so I'll show you one of my completed fronts or backs you basically knit two pieces that can either go as the front and the back and two sleeves and then sort of you sew it up afterwards so here is one of my front or back pieces so you can see the lacy stitch on it is really lovely and it's a lot of fun to knit although it's easy to get confused and I have had to yeah um unpick a few times when I've noticed that I've sort of got a bit confused on my lines and ended up with these sort of two, or two on the same side rather than back forth back forth on these holes um so I do every now and then do a bit of a sense check and look and check nothing's gone wrong on the pattern um but yeah it's a lot of fun I'm working my way through I'm on my second sleeve now so I'm yeah getting there I kind of don't want the knitting to end because it's such fun knitting but I've got a while to go on this sleeve I've only just started this second sleeve so I thought I'd just show you how I was getting on um, it'll still be a while before I finish because then I'll have all the sewing up to do and I like to take my time over that because I think that finishing can make a big difference to how the final garment turned out but I thought you might like to see just how I'm getting on with that one. Oh and I just realised I didn't mention the type of yarn I'm using for my pink cosmos sweater. The pattern is designed to be knitted up in cotton yarn and I'm using the We Are Knitters 100% Pima cotton yarn which is the yarn you get if you buy the Pink Cosmos sweater kit. It's really nice cotton yarn. It's, it knits up really nicely and it's really lovely and soft um, on your skin. Um, and it doesn't itch me like some sort of wools tend to. So I do like working with like a cotton yarn. So that's everything that I've got to share in today's video. See, I guess I've been quite busy over the last week or so. I'm really happy to finally got around to sewing up the estuary skirt version two. I'm really glad to have that skirt back in my wardrobe again and my daughter is really pleased with the leggings so I'm yeah happy that she's pleased with those I'm glad they turned out quite fun and cute and I'm really looking forward to getting started on my saguaro set trousers they've been something I've been wanting in my wardrobe for quite a while so yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting that fabric washed and dried and start cutting into it and enjoying the sewing process for those too so thank you so much for joining me as ever for another 
um, sewing video. Um, I really appreciate your watching and liking and commenting. Um, I really love how supportive and friendly the online sewing community is. So I'm really grateful for you to follow my channel. If you've enjoyed um, this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps get the video out there um, for more people to be able to see it, hopefully. And if you're new to my channel, then please do subscribe and also press the bell icon so you're notified when my future videos come out. So hopefully I'll be back for another video soon. In the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you again for watching. Bye.